Hey friends, welcome to week seven of my quarantine content tutorials. Today, we're gonna start work on one of my very favorite body tracers, and it is a trick that is going to give you a lot of tools that are gonna come in really, really helpful down the line. Yes, that's right. Today, we start working on crossers. Drex here from DrexFactor.com, teaching you flow arts and poise bending to benefit your body and brain. And today, we're going to cross up our poise just a little bit and uh, learn how to make a really cool body tracer out of it. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So. The next three weeks are going to be very interesting. They're going to be very interesting because we're starting to get into stuff that uh, I feel like takes a little bit of time to drill and get it under your belt in order to really get to the point where you have enough fluency with it to be able to use the tricks that are associated with it. So this means we're going to start diving into things like body tracers and anti-spin flowers, two things that a lot of people have been asking me about in the past few weeks. Now, the challenge is that the kind of basic uh, body mechanics necessary to do all of these things requires a bit of drilling before it starts to feel comfortable. So for the next three Mondays, I'm going to give you three pieces building up to crossers, and I'm going to spend the rest of the week teaching other stuff. The reason for this being that each of these pieces, I feel like you need to drill for at least a week and get it to feel comfortable before you can move on to the next step. So I'm operating under the assumption that those of you watching here are going to have a few days to work with it before you get to the next video in this series, and that's how it should be. These videos will also likely be shorter than my usual videos, uh, simply because I'm going to be covering a drill rather than a full trick and everything, but uh, hopefully y'all don't hold that against me. So the first piece of this puzzle is going to be learning how to spin with our arms crossed, which I will tell you is going to feel like you are starting over completely from scratch as a poise spinner. It is so weird spinning in a place where you have extremely limited mobility in your hands, as well as the fact that the way you control them now feels like it has gone backwards for some reason. Um, but that is why we are taking an entire week to drill on it, yeah? Where I want you to start with this is just go ahead and cross your arms and see if you can get the poi in your right hand spinning forwards for 10 beats, yeah? Just see what that feels like and where things go wrong. Uh, in a lot of cases, what'll start to happen is it'll veer in to like hit your leg or it'll veer up to the point where it's like, oh, it's gonna hit me in the face and everything. You need to do a little bit of work training here to try and isolate exactly what you need to do in your hand in order to keep the plane under control. It's totally acceptable both to stop and start over again, as well as if it starts to veer in and everything, really working hard on controlling the plane and everything. Some things that I find help for this um, are to pay very close attention to the orientation of your wrist and hand. Um, it's one of those things that I find that when my hand starts to tilt, the plane of my poi will also start to, to uh, tilt as well. Um, I kind of use what I call the thumb rule, wherein I think of my thumb as being the axle of a wheel and the poi as it spins around and everything is the plane that that wheel is on and everything. So if I point my thumb down, I'm going to wind up with a poi plane that is horizontal. It's like if I were uh, gripping the axle pointed down. If I point the axle out to the side, my plane goes vertical. If I am kind of lackadaisical about where it's pointing, then likewise the plane is going to veer off and everything. One of those things that you need to train here is the ability to keep the orientation of your hand and wrist stable in order to make sure that the orientation of your plane stays stable too. Okay, so now let's try doing this with the, just the left hand. Um, you can, when you cross your arms, uh, it can be any orientation you like, but in this case, I would strongly suggest that you keep things consistent. So if when you were drilling with your right hand, your right hand was on top, uh, you should try and keep your right hand on top when you're drilling your left hand as well. Um, whichever hand winds up on bottom is definitely going to have a little bit more difficult to time because its movement is going to be more restricted. But um, for all intents and purposes, your goal here is the same. Try and keep the plane stable for 10 solid beats. And as you just saw there, you might wind up in a position where the 
poi plane starts veering off and everything. Learn how to correct for this. Learn how to put that plane where you want it to go, because otherwise putting the two of them together just will not work. Okay, so if you can get in 10 beats with your right hand crossed up, 10 beats with your left hand crossed up, it's time to try both of them together. You'll want to do this in split time, same direction. And again, this is going to feel like we're learning how to spin all over again. Um, it's okay to start off if they're in like together same and everything, but really, really work to get to split time, same direction, because it's going to be very integral for getting down this trick and everything. Again, your goal here, get in 10 beats with the poi, in crossed arms, spinning split time, same direction, yeah? Okay, so that was fun, and guess what? You're not off the hook yet, because now you have to learn how to do all that, but with your poise spinning in reverse. One thing I'm going to strongly suggest right now is that you pick a side that's forward and a side that's reverse. Doesn't matter which one. Um, since my dominant direction of spin is clockwise, I do forwards to my right and reverse to my left, yeah? So again, you're gonna cross your arms, try and keep things consistent. I'm gonna keep my right hand on top and everything and get your right hand poise spinning reverse. This might be a little bit more intimidating because the poise coming up towards your face and everything, right? Again, work to figure out what orientation you have to keep your hand and wrist in in order to keep your poise plane stable here. And we get to do the same thing with the left hand. So cross up your arms. My right hand's gonna stay on top. See if you can get your left hand spinning reverse as it is kind of hanging out underneath your right arm there and everything. Again, you're looking for 10 beats here in order to keep it stable and everything. And um, when you have both hands down, then it's time to do them together. Again, see if you can get reverse split time with your arms crossed, 10 beats, yeah? You know that you are ready for the drills that are coming in uh, next week's video when you can do 10 beats forwards without any problems and 10 beats reverse without any problems. That's not going to happen in one day. It's going to take a little bit, it basically over the course of several days, you're going to drill this. Try and see if you can set a goal for each day. Like say, okay, day one, my goal is that I'm gonna get in 10 beats forward with my right hand and 10 beats forward with my left hand. Goal for day two is to see if I can get them both going together for five beats. Day three goal is to see if I can get them going together for 10 beats. Uh, the next day's goal is gonna be right hand reverse 10 beats by itself. And the day after the goal is to get the left hand 10 beats reverse by itself. And then by the time you get to next week's video, you should be in a place where you can get 10 beats reverse as well as 10 beats forwards with your arms crossed going in split time, same direction. That is the goal. Oh my goodness, that is a lot, I know. Um, but trust me, this is one of those skills that when you get it down and everything, it is going to open up the door to a whole bunch of stuff, especially in the body tracing world and everything. Crossers are definitely kind of a gateway trick that sets you up for a lot of other stuff down the road. So uh, yeah, I, I hope you enjoy coming on this journey with me. And if you could please help me out, like, share, and subscribe. It means so much to me getting all the messages and videos from people all over the world that have been enjoying these videos. And uh, I want to see that continue and I want to see more Flomies out there when we're done with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown and everything and this is how we get them. So if you are enjoying this project, if you are enjoying getting a POI tutorial every single day during the COVID-19 lockdown and everything, uh, please consider signing up to support this project over on Patreon like all of these nice people did. Uh, Patreon is what is allowing me to be able to produce a video a weekday now for two, uh, a month and a half plus counting and everything and is what is guaranteeing that I can pay rent and put food on the table and everything. So um, thank you to everybody who has signed up thus far and there are a lot of you. Uh, but if you have the means and uh, you are willing um, and I totally understand if it's a no in either case, uh, I would really appreciate it if you could go sign up over at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. You get early access to all of my content plus a vote in topics that I tackle in the future. Uh, the topic that you're seeing today was a direct byproduct of asking some questions of my supporters on Patreon, in fact. Uh, but either which way, please and thank you. Cool, so tomorrow we're going to start diving into some cool things that happen when we expand our repertoire when it comes to stalls, yeah? Awesome. I will see you then, and uh, I hope you all are well, both mentally and physically out there. Peace. <laughs>